Rub up your engines! Okay, today we got a car that's got a CVT transmission that I would actually buy. It's a 2022 Toyota Corolla hatchback. Now there's various reasons I buy it. Numero uno, as we see inside the door, they're still made in Japan. Numero dos, even though it is the fancy version, it was only $27,000, so the price is right. And numero tres is under the hood. Now there's two liter four cylinder inline engine. Now it does have a CVT transmission, but it's a hybrid. CVT. It actually has a first gear. It goes into first gear when you take off. An actual gear that meshes in and spins the wheels. Once it's out of first gear, it then engages on the bottom side to the CVT transmission. So it's zippy and at the same time, it's pretty good gas mods. They're getting 35 and a half miles a gallon overall, city, highway combined. That it's pretty good gas mods for a fun zippy little car like this. Now today, I'm gonna to be changing the CVT fluid because it's very important that you take care of that fluid. You wanna take care of that very complex, expensive transmission. Now I'm gonna show you how easy it is to change it out too. The biggest task is taking the plastic crap out of the way to access the drain and the fill plug. That's the only real hassle of the thing. And just make sure you use the right fluid. You wanna use the same fluid that it came with. You don't want to mix fluids. When you drain it, a whole bunch of the fluid is still inside the torque converter and the transmission. So you're just basically diluting it. Use the same original fluid. Now, if you're like me, you don't want to get your hands all dirty. I got these nice mechanic gloves. You get non latex ones if you want. These are best. They're strong. They held up quite well. Now, first, we're going to jack it up in the air. Now, you can see here, you want to use this reinforced jack part right here. I'm going to flashlight so you can see it better. There it is. That's the reinforced part. We'll jack it up there. Now, we'll put the jack stand under so we don't get squashed. Now, like I said, the biggest hassle, we got to take this stupid plastic cover off. I don't know why they do this crap, but it makes everything a pain. You got to unbolt, and it also has those stupid plastic clips you have to take off. It's kind of a pain in the butt. The stupid clips, they snap off. You pull the tab and then they come out. So off comes one plastic piece. Now we got this one off. Now we got this pin out of the way. The drain hole's right here, but the fill hole's on the other side. So good thing we jacked this side of the car because they have to take the wheel off. And once you know, there's more plastic crap to take off. I absolutely hate these plastic things. They're such a pain in the butt to get off. I got the special tool and it's still a pain in the butt. And as you can see, finally, the crap is off. There's the full plug. Okay, Toyota, let's face it. If you're gonna make them so all this crap has to come off, why don't you just use bolts the whole way? I mean, all things are blurred. There's some regular bolts, some self-threading ones, and then these stupid pieces of crap plastic snaps. Hey, make up your mind. When you just use bolts to make a better job. These things always break when you take it off. It's just stupid. Now, I do have to say, that's where this little handy CSRI electric impact work costs. These are hard to get off. But you stick it on here, off it comes. That was easy. Now, it's a 10 milliliter Allen head. It just goes in the hall. Take that out, and it'll start to drain in the pan. There it goes. Here's the trick. It'll drain some of it out. But inside, there's another special little fitting. And you gotta take that out too once this stops draining. Now, as you can see, this is a long six millimeter. It goes into the hole. And when we take it out, you get more fluid out. You can see now a whole bunch comes out. You gotta take that plug out. Here it is once I take it out. And now comes the tricky part. In order to fill it correctly by measuring it, since there's no dipstick, there's a very complex system you have to go through, which is a royal pain in the butt. But here's the easiest thing. Get what you have. Pour it in a container and you'll see exactly what came out. And here we go. Now what you can do if you want is you can pour this out, pour your new fluid in up to this mark and you'll have the same amount. But I've already marked this and this is 4.25 liters. So we'll put 4.25 liters back in. If you don't have anything marked, fill it up, empty this out, clean it out, fill it up to that ring and then pump that amount back in. Then we go back under, we gotta fill it up. So we put a new washer on the drain plug, we tighten that up, wrench here and we get it nice and snug so it doesn't leak. Then we gotta fill it up in a fill hole here. And now with this cute transfer pump, it sucks it out of your jug and pumps it into the transmission. It's that easy? Here it goes, just keep pumping 
till you get it all in. Then once it's in, you put the joint plug in with a new gasket. Then pull all the stupid plastic crap back on. God, what a pain. Now luckily I'm a mechanic, so I got boxes of these clips laying around. Because you're always going to break some. They're just a stupid design. I wish I'd never use them, but they're cheap to make, so they're going to continue using them. You can change your own fluid if you want. If you don't mind dealing with all that plastic horse manure. <laughs> So let's start her up. Take it for a spin. It does have a nice crisp backup camera. I'll give it that. See, combination city highways get 35 and a half miles a gallon. Oh, that CVT first gear works. Yeah, pretty zippy, I gotta say, I like it. And I do have to say, the transition from first gear to the CVT transmission was pretty seamless. We'll do it again to show you. And here we go. See, it was pretty seamless. You didn't feel any jerks or anything. We're gonna take it to our little drag strip. And I do have to say over time, they've improved the suspension. This has independent links on the back and it really handles well. It handles a whole bunch better than my Matrix does. It's got a much smoother ride. Even though it's a slightly smaller car. Normally smaller cars won't ride as well. Well, this one rides fine. You can play with the fake gears over here. Hey, you can make them go up, down, whatever you want. But we're just gonna leave it and drive. There we go. Better hurry up, no problem pulling in. Now I care about who's behind me, and there's nobody behind me, so I can slowly get up to my little drag strip and see what this can do. Realize it is a Toyota Corolla. They're not known as race cars, but it's also a two-liter engine. So here we go, nobody's behind us. We're gonna try a little drag strip, and here we go. Decent takeoff. We're going 56 already, I gotta say, not bad at all. And then let's say you're going 45, 46, you want to pass somebody, we'll floor it. Not race car speed, but hey, you're going 65 pretty quick. Plenty enough to pass people with. Wiggle it back and forth here. It's got a nice feel to it. So there you have it, a fun, zippy little car to drive around. You're thinking, but Scotty, will it hold up over time? Well, historically, Corollas have always held up over time. Now, realize this does have the dynamic force engine with both poor fuel injectors and direct fuel injectors and it has a hybrid CVT transmission that has a launch first gear, then it switches over to a regular CVT transmission so it gets better gas mileage. It works fine as it stands now. Will it pass the test of time? Well, from my experience with Toyotas, I said, yeah. I mean, you're never gonna know for sure until they've been out eight or 10 years to see how they hold up. But so far, I haven't seen any particular problems with them. Like I say, time will tell. It's an awful lot of technology. The Toyota Dynamic Force System, interesting technology. It works quite well now. Let's hope that it holds up over time. That part, only time's gonna tell us that. I can just tell you what it's like now, and it's a fun little car. Gets great gas mileage. You can maintain this stuff yourself. If you saw, if you don't mind a bunch of plastic crap you got to take apart to access it. I mean, it's stupid design, but that's engineers these days. You know, they want you to take it back to the dealer so they can rip you off. They try to make it as hard as possible for you to work on it, so I'm showing you how you can. And here's some bonus questions and answers. R3Z says, I changed my rack and pinion on my power steering and my power steering pump because the lower RPM, the steering wheel is hard to turn. It's still doing the same thing. Any ideas? Change the high pressure hose. If the high pressure hose is bad and starts to collapse at low speeds, it won't let enough fluid flow through the system and it'll make the power steering button. You change the rack, right? And that's it 99% of the time. As it gets old and yours is 10 years old, sometimes the rubber starts to collapse and it happens. Now, if that's not it, then you got a problem in your front end, like you got a worn ball joint and it's stiff. So when you turn, it's hard to turn at low speeds because the ball joint's worn or you got a problem with the control arm, something's binding in the front suspension. But most of the time, it's just the high pressure hose is bad. It's binding it. That's why at low speeds it does it, but at high speeds, when the pump's spinning like mad and it's building up more pressure, it works okay because the extra speed will blow it through the hose. When at low speed, it won't. So change the high pressure hose first. Here's one you might never think of. Those are abandoned fields of AstroTurf, artificial turf. And this poor guy in Pennsylvania, a farmer, was told by a Danish company, Rematch, who was supposed to recycle this stuff, we'll store it on your farm. It'll give you 4,500 bucks a month. The farmer's like, oh, okay, you know. Now, the Danish told them, well, we're gonna recycle it. We don't have a recycling factory out here, but we're going to, so don't worry. We're storing it for a while. We'll pay you this money. Well, after two years, they stopped paying him. And he's stuck with all these piled up AstroTurf things rotting away in the sun. He's trying to sell his land. Nobody will buy it. Now, stay 
state environmental laws are telling them, hey, you failed to obtain necessary permits for storing the turf. So the poor guy, he thought, oh, he's helping the world recycle AstroTurf, right? And he's getting paid at the same time. Well, now guess what? Like a boomerang, he came back, hit him in the back of the head. Said, you're not getting any money now. Now you can't even sell your land because nobody wants to buy it filled with the stupid AstroTurf that nobody knows what to do with. Be wary of people offering you money for recycling things because there's a lot of flim flam artists in that business today. And this guy got flim flam. Now he's stuck on a farm he can't sell with a bunch of AstroTurf that they're telling him you got to get rid of it now. <laughs> So if you never want to miss another one of my new car repair videos, remember to ring that bell.